Hello, FC Youth, and welcome to our final week of Live with FC Youth. It's chaos. We saved the best for last. Tonight we have Pastor Caleb and his wife, Corey Hubbard, who are from overseas talking to us tonight about radical love, as well as youth students, Riley and Avery, who are gonna be playing along with Kaya, who is another Freedom Center Creative Arts person. Super, super excited about the episode that we have for you tonight. Can't wait for you guys to see everything. We hope you enjoy the show. And it, it's live with FC Youth. It's chaos. Is this... I can't clap. What, what can I actually say? Can I be like, what's up, youths? Josh here. Sports. Tug of war. I don't know what to say. Sports. What's up, FC Youth? We're going to be playing sports here. I'm Josh Eide, and uh, the sport that we're going to be playing for this session is called Tug of War. The first opponent to take back their three cones to the center of the net is the winner. So let's see our first contenders. So for our sixth through eighth grade girls, we have Olivia Fetters. Fetters? Not Feathers. Fetters. Can I just re-say that? All right, so for the sixth through eighth grade girls, we have Olivia Fetters. And for the 6th through 8th grade boys, we have Gavin Burton. On my mark. Three, two, one, sports! Oh, looks like Olivia has the lead. Oh, she's reaching, she's reaching. She's, she's bringing it back. Gavin, you gotta monster your strength and just go. Drag her through the sand. Come on, Olivia. got this, Gavin. Just reach. Reach for the stars. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? <laughs> Good job, Gavin. You got it. Go for the next one. <laughs> What a bone-crushing hit. <laughs> yep. That's a bold strategy. Just lay down. Let's see how it pans out for him. I want to see some movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. scores the second cone and there goes Gavin for the victory for the last cone that he has to grab and just like that Gavin takes the W all right so for round two we have high school boys versus each other we have Ryan Ingles for ninth and tenth grade And then for 11th and 12th grade, we have... Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Andrew Tottingham. And then, on my mark... Tug of War. I like the bear crawl, I like the bear crawl. Get it, Andrew, get it. Andrew... Andrew firmly grasped the first cone. Firmly grasp it! <laughs> this, is, this is a very good strategy that Andrew has. 
hospital and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine. He takes the lead with all three cones, with Ryan not even getting one. Nice! And that's all we have for the game. Goodbye, FC Youth. Until next time. <laughs> Keep watching. Keep watching. So that's all we have for the game. Keep watching until the next segment. That's all we have for the game. Keep watching until the next segment. I can't breathe. You're welcome for laying down on you. Yeah. <laughs> no, the S is a peacemaker. Yeah. Like he wants everything, everybody to like have a good time. And That's like, me. Yeah. Yes, to me. Jessica. What's yours? Jessica. Jessica. Hello, FC Youth. Welcome to our next segment. We're going to be doing a thing called Random Dance Battle. How this is going to work is I have this bowl in front of me with 20 dance names. I'm going to choose one out, and then the dancers behind me are going to do their very best to showcase it for you. At the end of the 20 dances, you guys are going to vote either for Josh or for Jesse, and we'll decide who the winner is. Cue the music. We're starting out with Josh doing the Rainforest Rumba. And now here's Jesse with the Jet Ski Jive. Now we have Josh coming in with the Foot Sliver Shuffle. And then back to Jesse with the Factory Foxtrot. Bringing it back to Josh with the Teacher Twist. Up next we have the Quarantine Quick Step. Now, on to the Monday Morning Mambo. And back to Jesse with the Hungry Chicken Headbang. And here's Josh with the constru Construction Yard Cha-Cha. Then back to Jesse with the tightrope tango. Here's Josh with the oil change conga. <laughs> back to Jesse with the toddler trot. Here's Josh with the desktop, desk job disco. Now back to Jesse with the mailman Macarena. Here's Josh with the ostrich one step. All right, now here's Jesse with the airport hustle. All right, all right, I respect it, I respect it. Here's Josh with the window washing waltz. And then back to Jesse with the hunting season hustle.
Josh with the Hummingbird Hoedown. And last, but certainly not least, we have Jesse with the Boogerman Flop. All right, that's all the dances we have for you guys. Go ahead and send in the comments the name of the person that you thought did better. We have Josh and we have Jesse. Tune in for our next segment. Now join me in welcoming your fellow youth students and leader, Kaya Green, Avery Molinix, and Riley Smith for an original song that they wrote.
defender King above all kings Hello, FC Youth, and welcome to our next segment where we interview people about what's going on in their lives. Today, we specifically wanted to interview Corey and Caleb Hubbard. Guys, go ahead and say hi real quick. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, we have Pastor Maddie with us. Pastor Maddie, go ahead and give a smile and wave. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so today, what we're specifically going to be talking about is sacrificially loving. Corey and Kayla have had some tremendous things happen in their life in the last two years, and so we wanted to give them the opportunity to talk about what's been going on. So, uh, Caleb, I'm going direct to direct this question towards you, but what in your life specifically has changed in the last two years? Yeah, uh, J.D., you know, we used to work together just a few years ago. We did some of the greatest things crazy in my life. crazy to think about. You took my job, so <laughs> I'm still a little hurt about that. No, uh, well, Corey and I decided that uh, there was a calling on our lives that was extremely important to us, and, and we decided to move overseas, to sell our home, to get rid of most of our belongings, and to move overseas with our two baby boys. Mm -hmm. Corey, what was it like having to give up all of that stuff, having two small children? You know, when we first got to our area, I, um, I remember looking at Caleb and thinking, we're not going to make it. Like, this is just insane. Who does this? Who brings their children overseas? What type of mother am I? I started having all these crazy thoughts, but when I, you know, go back to my why of what we're doing and why we moved overseas, um, it became a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. So... Do you, do you guys remember the moment where you made that decision where it was like, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to be making this decision to move overseas? So I made the decision first. And, uh, I <laughs> as, told as all Caleb, good wives do. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I told Caleb about it, and he was like, heck no. Like, we are not moving overseas. And I guess he can go ahead and finish the story from there. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, I knew the answer before, but a lot of times we run whenever something is in front of us is super hard, and we know it's going to hurt and cause some pain in our lives, we put it off as long as we can, hoping maybe the answer will, answer will change. Mm -hmm. You know, like, maybe God, you're like, maybe God had uh, some bad spaghetti tonight or something, and, you know, he's, he got the answer wrong. Like, no, I'm supposed to be here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was the answer before the answer, if that makes sense. Yeah. I knew long before I had finally was like, all right, we're going to do this. I knew, I knew long before that it was yeah. what I was supposed to do. Yeah, then you just had that moment where you were like, fine, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Yeah. What was the hardest thing you guys had to give up when you decided to move? I think it's culture. Mm. And uh, that sounds, it's interesting because when you're in a culture, you don't really see a lot of things because you're in it every single day. There's a lot of things that you don't notice about your own culture, you know, the culture that you're, you're raised in and lived in. And knowing that I'm giving up that culture and I'm giving it up for my kids too. Uh, my wife, all of us were giving up friendships, relationships with family, uh, the same TV shows that you grow up watching, the things, these small things that seem like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. They, they over time, they weigh on you. Yeah. And just to add on that, I think community is like yeah. one of the hardest things. Um, just being in a city of 1.2 million people and there was one other couple that were foreigners. And so there was four of us that we met on a Sunday and we did church mm -hmm. at our house. And um, just so different, like you, you, miss the, you miss the atmosphere of going to a church, having a collective worship. Um, I remember coming back from where we lived and coming in on the Sunday morning and I just like cried the whole time because I was like, I miss this community so much. So I think yeah. that's what I would have to say. Yeah, I, I personally believe God created us for community. And so to have to give up the community that God gave us to go follow after what God has told us to do, I, I think that's so incredibly brave, number one, but also very, very difficult. Pastor Mary, what, you seem like you want to say something. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, how long did it, until you could find your own version of community out there, did it take to kind of develop your own culture within a culture kind of out there? Yeah, I, I, I don't think we still have developed our own culture. Uh, Roman and Armor will be what we call third culture kids mm -hmm. because they have a little bit of uh, their culture from mom and dad and a little bit of this new culture, and then they develop their own. So they're kind of a little weird, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, to find community, we found friends, but it's still hard to break into a culture that you haven't been a part of, that you didn't grow up in. You don't have the same cultural innuendos and don't share those same cultural experiences, especially when you're living in an area that has a history that's really old. 
in your guys' own words, what does the what do the words sacrificial love mean to you? I think sacrificial love costs something. Mm-hmm. You know, we have the free gift of grace, but it wasn't free. It cost God a lot. Yeah. And so sacrificial love here costs somebody something. And a lot of times I think it's pain. It'll cost you sometimes comfort. Uh, it'll cost you physical things, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, the things that you have here that you're attached to. How easily could you let them go? And it's funny, when you spend some, times away from, uh, some time away from those things, you realize how you can do without them. But there's other things that are a lot painful, more painful that they're inside your heart, inside your mind, uh, psychological pain. Um, I mean, you think about, once again, all the prophets in the Old Testament and what they gave up at, uh, being... Uh, looked at as fools in their uh, society. And I think a lot of people look at us and they're like, why would you move over there? You're crazy. Yeah. What are you doing? You have a three-year-old and a one-year-old right yeah. now? That's crazy. Yeah, I think sacrificial love costs something. Yeah. Yeah, Corey, what about you? What do you, what do you in your own words, what do you think sacrificial love means? You know, I'd have to say I, w- I agree with the wise words of my husband. I think that's a great example or a great definition. Um, I think there has to be some type of pain involved. And so I'm not going to recap what he just said, but I think, I really think that was a great example. Yeah. 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 I, I love what you have to say. Pastor Matt, you look like you were getting ready to say something. Or are you just moving? I was just moving. Oh, okay. Cool. I mean, I can. Yeah. Um, I think part of that, too, is I think people that are experiencing that, it's like, how do you, I think they look at God saying, well, if he's asking me to do this, why is it causing me pain? And I think... Like, is there something that you would say to that person? They're like, okay, if I'm already giving up so much, why is it still causing me pain in that moment of sacrificial love? Like, is there something God has specifically given you guys that is like, here's a little bit of comfort in what you're doing and what your calling is? Yeah, I think it's the promise, promise and fulfillment, that with every great sacrifice in the Old Testament through the New Testament, there's a great fulfillment of a promise that we are God's people. He's redeeming us and that we have a future in his family. So even though there's pain, with great pain, I think comes great reward, just like anybody who's ever done a sport or uh, played an instrument to where their fingers bled or something like that, you know, where you're on the field working so hard, your muscles are cramping, you're tired, and it hurts, but when you get the championship, it's, you don't remember the pain. And just like Jesus talks about uh, childbirth, mm-hmm. and I've never given That's birth so to a painful. child, so Corey, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> No, and I just think, um, too, you know, we don't deserve anything. I love what Dick Brogdon says. He says, the only thing we deserve is hell. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds super emo, but that is so true. (laughs) That would be the greatest drop line in any emo song (laughs) ever. I just hear Ford today saying it right now. It's, it's, it's almost like I, I sometimes don't like saying that because it's, I know it sounds really intense, but when you think about the blessings that God has given us, even in this little discomfort that we have going overseas, when I think about God and the cross and his mercy mm-hmm. and that, you know, I do deserve hell. That's all I deserve. Anything else is an additional blessing by his grace. Yeah. Like it's, it really leaves me speechless. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's Thank so you. cool. Yeah. So I, I, I think one question that a lot of our students would probably have right now is I'm, I'm, I'm 14 years old. I'm 12 years old. I'm 16 years old. I don't have the ability to move overseas. Yet you're talking to me about sacrificial love. I, how am I supposed to do that? You guys want to add in a little bit about maybe how it is that a 12 to 16, 12 to 18 year old could potentially begin to learn how to sacrificially love? I would say it starts with abiding. And when I say abiding, I mean by spending extravagant time with Jesus. Yes. If you um, want to do anything, if you want to change the world, if you want to be a overseas worker, if you want to be a pastor, whatever it is you want to be, you could not do anything with excellence unless you are spending ultimate time um, in prayer and reading God's word, extravagant time, falling in love with Jesus, on your knees in prayer, mm-hmm. um, and just you know pursuing him with everything you have pursuing an intimacy with him um that's really like no other relationship that you have yeah yeah with without a relationship with jesus it's all all else is meaningless Mm -hmm. because if we move overseas sell all that we have but don't do it in love then what's the point yeah what's the point it's 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 meaningless so i think sacrificial love you need to learn from the source you need to get it from the source 
Yeah. Can you guys recall making any decisions before that that God was kind of leading you up to moving overseas that he like called you maybe to like, hey, I really want you to give, you know, two thousand dollars and you're like, I don't wanna do it, you know, and then like you were like, Hey, I really want you to sell this house to get this house, whatever and you were just you constantly had to follow those footsteps. Like it wasn't just like boom, one day, you know, I became a Christian and the next day God called me to overseas. Can you remember like any steps along the journey that you also had to sacrifice before you got to moving to overseas? Yeah, I think moving out of our house in the first place, it was Corey's childhood home, a beautiful home with property, a sweet pole barn that any of you students that were still around remember playing dodgeball in the barn. <laughs> My wife talks about it all the time. Exactly, and those were great <laughs> memories, you know, maybe a little bit too heated at times, but they were great <laughs> memories. Oh yeah, she talks about those memories too, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, so it was getting rid of not just a home, which is a physical thing, but the memories yeah. too, and knowing that, well, my kids are never going to have a home. They're basically nomads. Yeah, I actually remember when you guys were getting ready to leave. I was like, you know, I told Pastor Caleb at one point, if you ever left, I would follow him, but I'm not sure I can follow him in this aspect. I, I want to, I want to, but I, I'm not sure this is the time for me, you know? There's a lot of job openings right now where we're at. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. don't tell me that. So <laughs> I'm okay with that. See you, Pastor J. <laughs> <laughs> so my, Daddy takes over. Yeah, my, my last question that I have for you guys, because we only have two minutes left, is what is the most important life lesson that you learned over the last two years that you wish you could tell, you know, high schoolers, middle schoolers, stuff like that? Like, what did you guys learn that you wish you could tell people? Man, there's so much. And uh, to, to boil it down to one thing is really difficult because I feel like there's so much that you learn over time you know the whole hindsight's 2020 which yeah. i'm sure will be a sermon this coming year for people in january oh, but, <laughs> hindsight's 2020 <laughs> yeah that's a great sermon series for january <laughs> but it's just to slow down uh be present mm -hmm. put the devices away put your phones away put the games away for a minute and like make some friends and enjoy the time yeah like don't rush i, I know that's pretty pretty surface level stuff right here it's not really deep but I just think, like, in the t like, if you can just, like, be present, yeah. you know, isn't it weird how, like, life goes by so fast? Yeah. And, I mean, J.D., you, Maddie, you guys know now, like, you look back and you're just like, yeah. man, I wish I would have enjoyed those moments more. Like, enjoy being 12 yeah. and being in youth group and, and enjoy those moments and really make the most of it. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. You're, you're talking about being present. And uh, I had an Apple Watch on my wrist for two years. And my wife, for our wedding, bought me a watch. And uh, she, she was like, I just want you to wear this for like while we're on our honeymoon. And I was like, okay. And so I was without my Apple Watch for three days. And I cannot begin to tell you how much I stayed away from things and how much I was able to focus on everything else in the world. Being present changes your perspective. And I know you're saying it's surface level, and it is. But there's a reason why it's surface level. It's because it needs to be there. And you need to recognize that being present is everally important. So that's a great lesson. To and learn. then it goes deeper, right? Yeah, it like does. Be oh, present. Once deeper. you realize the time that you have when you're not watching TV and all this stuff, like, yeah. man, look at your screen time. Yeah. You basically have a part-time job. I, yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah. Corey. Was, the average teenager, I think, is at, like, between four to six hours a day on their yeah. phone. And so I couldn't agree with that more. Put your phone away. Put the video games away. Put Netflix away. Yeah. And back to that abiding. Spending some extravagant time with Jesus. I know it doesn't seem appealing, and, like, it might not even at first, but I promise when you start to abide and you make that a priority, yeah. you crave it. Your soul literally needs it. And it's, you know, you replace that with other things. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think yeah. as we're talking about sacrificial love, too, that's a really great point because, you know, sacrificing four and a half hours a day in order to follow Jesus, like, it's like, I don't have four and a half hours a day. It's like, how long are you on your phone for? Yeah. Four and a half hours a day. Okay, sweet. You have the time to give it up. You can sacrifice that. And God may not be saying, hey, I want you to move overseas, but he may be saying, I want you to put your phone away at least for the next hour and spend some time with me. That in and of itself is a sacrifice. Pastor Mary, do you want to say anything real quick before we close out? No, I just think... We're so caught up with having to be entertained all the time mm -hmm. that once we, like, we're like, oh, how is a, a time with God entertaining? Because we're like, we need something that's, like, flashy before our eyes at all times. And it's like, no, you have no idea. Like, I love talking to students about the Bible, too, because they're like, it's so boring. And I'm like, if you get in there, like, you have no idea. There's, like, crazy Jerry Springer stuff in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jerry. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, guys, I just want to thank you so much for coming on and talking to us tonight about your experience, everything that you've learned through sacrificial love. But that, that is all the time that we have available for us for this interview. Um, I hope you guys stay tuned for the rest of tonight because there's a lot of great stuff we have coming up. Please check it out. 
Well, guys, that was our final episode for you. Before we go, I really wanted to make sure that we hit on just some final moments. You see, I think Pastor Caleb and Corey, I think they had some amazing things to say tonight. And they've lived such a radically loving life that you may be sitting out there in the crowd wondering, man, I, I don't know how I can live like that. I don't know how I can move overseas. I don't know how I can, you know, leave behind all of my friends and family in order to do something that God's called me to do. But can I just say real quick, if there's always a grace on your life for what God has called you to do. There's one thing specifically that Corey hit on that I want to hit on too. And she said that the only thing that we deserve in this world is hell. And I want to hit on that a little bit because that sounds like a very dark, awful thing. But what she's actually intending to say is without Jesus, our, our, what we were supposed to receive is hell. But you see, Jesus came down from heaven. He came here to earth. He lived a sinless life and he died on the cross for you and I. Now, that may just seem like a statement, but if you knew the pain, if you knew the agony, if you knew what he had to go through in those, you know, that, that day of just awfulness, you would see a man who was beaten and broken and destroyed. So that way you can know eternity in heaven with a loving father. And I'm here to tell you today as your pastor, as your friend, as maybe a mentor out there, that God is looking at you and saying, I sent the most pure thing I have. I sent the, the highest exalted thing I have in my kingdom down to earth to die so that way I could get to know you better. He's not looking for anything out of you that would be considered perfection. He's simply asking for you to trust him and simply asking for you to trust him back. Guys, I, there are just so many amazing things that come in a relationship with Christ. And he's looking at you right now saying, there's a decision that you can make. Are you going to choose to follow me for the rest of my life and know what eternal paradise is like? Or are you going to choose to stay away from me and maybe find out what the alternative would be? And we all know that that's, you know, eternal torture and damnation. And I, I'm just here to tell you guys that there's a good, amazing, loving Father who's wanting you to respond to Him. You're going to have an option to do that here in the next little bit. And so I just had those final things to say. Just, man, God loves you. He wants you to live a radically loving life. He wants you to know how badly He loves you. He wants to not just take away from you, but He wants to give back into your life. And if you could just let go of those few things that are causing you to be anxious, to be jealous, to be mad, to, to live a life that just seems unfruitful. If you could just let go of some of those things and pick up some of the principles that he has for you. I'm here to tell you that you have an amazing destiny ahead of you if you just choose God tonight. Now, there's nobody looking around. There's nobody who's going to say anything to you. There's nobody who's going to walk up to you because, you know, we have to be socially distant. But if you're on the crowd right now and you feel a tug on your heart to say, I want to know what it's like to just love extravagantly. I want to know what it's like to be loved extravagantly. Then in the next three seconds, you're going to have the opportunity to respond. One, no one's looking around. No one's looking around. If you wanted to comment at home, you can put a hand up saying that you wanted to get saved. Two, again, it's between you and God. No one else needs to know. It's just between you and God. Are you willing to lay down everything in your life in order to pick up what he has for you and live a more beneficial, fruitful, loving life? Three, if that's you, put your hand up out in the crowd or put your hand up in the comments because we want to know if there's any chance out there that you needed to be loved greater, if you needed to know a greater love. Guys, if you just put your hand up, that's amazing. That's incredible. If you put your hand up in the comments, I know that I probably put my hand up in the comments because I'm always someone who needs more of Jesus. And if that's you, man, congratulations. That's incredible. Uh, we would love to continue on with a relationship with you. You can keep coming back every single week beyond this. We do have live youth services every Thursday night. And we want to stay in contact with you and love on you the best that we can. But, as, but I just want to pray over you for the next little bit. Father God, I thank you so much for the hands that went up and for the hands that wanted to go up but didn't. God, I I pray that you would meet them in their heart, meet them in their life, and you would show them extravagant love, that you would show them what it means to be extravagant, lo extravagantly loved, and show them what it means to love extravagantly. God, we just thank you so much for your heart, for, for your children, and for the people out there who, uh, who are experiencing this for the first time, or maybe for the hundredth time. God, we thank you that you are just a God of love who pours it out on everyone who asks. You said, knocking the door would be open to you. God, I pray for every student that just knocked on the door, that it would be open to them and they would receive you with open arms, open hearts, and open minds. And we just thank you and love you and praise you in your holy name we pray. Amen. And then, all right, guys. Well, that was the final episode of Live with FC Youth. It's chaos. We hope that you enjoyed. Make sure that you stay tuned because there's no point in that in this video. We want you to go over to our Facebook page. We're going live there right now. We're going live there right now. So that way you can see the who's going to be getting the car, who's going to be getting the electric longboard, which team won October Chaos this year. 
It's just gonna be an amazing, amazing time. So go over to FC Youth's live Facebook page and you can see everything there. It's gonna be amazing. We'll see you guys then. Love you, FC Youth.